I, I saw that. I was like, oh man, please, like, please build this feature. They should do that. I will literally, I'm like, take all my money. I'll like, for like a year, you know, just to not have to like wait to like yeah. do all that. Oh my God, that would be so great. I mean, does that, but the question is, does that ruin the experience? Like what, like, you know, yeah. what, what does that do? I mean, you know, cause then it's like people could just subscribe and then never log into Top Show. Cause they're like, yeah, I'll just let my packs or crew. And it's like, well, you know, they're not really, then they're not really on the site and stuff. You're in the lab. I do want to say this. I really appreciate you coming on and giving me the time. Um, and I'm actually happy that it got delayed because a lot happened in the last little bit and especially yeah. for you, which we're going to talk about. Sure. Um, but before we do anything else, can you introduce yourself? Can you tell people who have no idea who Jen is, who you are and what you do? Ching. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jennifer Sudo and I collect NBA Top Shop moments. <laughs> um, and I also make videos about collecting NBA Top Shop moments and uh, mostly like weekly update videos for people on my personal YouTube channel on what happened in the last week. Um, and then I do weekly giveaways on those videos. And then I just started working for Evaluate Market as their uh, social media coordinator. So now I run their socials. And um, they, it's funny because they, they, they call me the head of marketing, but I'm the only person in the department. So <laughs> that's a good, that's a good name. <laughs> I'll, take the title, I'll take the title. I'm the head of marketing, you know. <laughs> I really like that. So for just for context, for those who don't know, because it might see the last name and, and see similarities, you have a sister. I did a podcast uh, with, with Steph previously. The first thing I want to ask you is how similar are you two? Are you guys complete different, like complete opposites? That's a great question. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like I'm biased. I feel like someone else has to say if we are, are true, similar. But um <laughs> I think we're different only because we grew up so similar and we used to look exactly like, like, cause we're identical twins. So we started out with the exact same DNA. And then as you get older, epigenetics, you know, the environment and your experiences uh, shape your DNA and you change and you morph into different people. So growing up, we were definitely like pretty much like the same. And I was um, a lot more introverted than Steph. She's kind of helped me um, become more extroverted, I guess. So I was always like, like whatever she did, I would just like copy her. Um, and, and also our mom would always group us together and everyone kind of grouped us together as twins. And so you kind of form this like twin identity and you kind of forget that like you're also your own person that can make your own decisions. Um, and so that's why it's important to like separate twins as well, you know, growing up a bit. But nonetheless, obviously, I, I, you know, I grew out of that. I'm, I'm my own person now. But um, I think we're pretty different. But um, maybe we're the same. I really don't know. <laughs> it's all good. You, you gave some, some good context on that. Um, it's just dope that you guys are actually both creating content in the same space. I think that's like a really cool dynamic that you don't get to see very often. Um, yeah. So that, that's going to be fun to see, you know, what you guys build out together. But before we go into all this stuff, which I'm sure you talk about literally every single day, because all you do is like, I'm sure focus on Top Shot and you're in the complete rabbit hole of everything around it. What about Jen outside of Top Shot? So like, did you go to school for anything? Are you, do you have a degree in anything? Are you trying to like chase passions outside of Top Shot? Like what, you know, I'm trying to understand like who, who are you outside of this like content creator? I mean, I actually, I'm looking at my degree. I do, I do have a piece <laughs> of paper up on my wall um, in a frame. Um, I graduated from ASU. Um, I got a, a bachelor's of science degree in uh, psychology. And, um, and that was like um, a goal that I had since I was a little kid. My mom always stressed the importance of education and, and no one in, in like my, my immediate, immediate family had, I mean, both my parents had dropped out of high school. So I was like, college is like a big deal, you know? And uh, so I was always like, I have to go to college. I have to go to college. And then I went to college and I graduated and then I was just kind of like, okay, like now what? Like, I didn't think past that. Um, so, and then I didn't even really end up doing anything with my degree really, but you know, it was, it was a fun experience and not just fun, but it was like, it was a good learning experience, I think. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, besides Top Shot, what do I do? I mean, I like to, um, go on road trips and visit family like every so often. Um, I mean, day to day, I don't do much besides Top Shot, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've been looking into other NFTs. Right. So like, 
like last night I just bought these like NFTs. Um, I, <laughs> you, uh, you, gotta, you gotta let us know. Cause I'm sure like, just like me too, I'm in the rabbit hole of other NFTs. So what okay. are you looking at right now? What'd you just get? I just bought some boxies. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. I have. Yeah. Okay. You have. Okay. They kind of look like me bits, I guess, but yeah. It, um, yeah, they were doing like, okay, there's only 10,000 and it's like, there's different tiers. And anyway, I just wanted to kind of try it out because I hadn't bought any NFTs really besides Crypto Kitties and NBA Top Shop moments. And I did the Street Fighters. I didn't really, I still have them. I'm just hanging on Your to them. Your reviews on those. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like maybe dabble a little here and there just to dip my feet in. But mostly I am pretty loyal, I would say, <laughs> to NBA Top Shot and Dapper Lab products. I like that. That's a good little plug. So, the OG, like one of the OG things is crypto kitties. Did you get into that like a long time ago? Or um, I didn't get into it a lot. I got into it last year. Like, uh, I think, you know, I think it was before I got into Top Shot. I got into Top Shot in October, 2020. And I think I got into crypto kitties maybe like a month before that or something. I like went on stuff. I was like, Jen, you have to get some crypto kitties. Like, like, I don't know why she just randomly remembered about crypto kitties. Like it wasn't even popping. <laughs> But anyway, she just randomly remembered about it. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm always like, really, I'm not one to, I don't like spending my ETH. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to spend my ETH, you know, like I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a hodler. So, um, and I've been in the crypto space, you know, for a couple of years, but I'm not good at trading, you know? So, yeah. but I was like, all right, fine. Like I'll sacrifice a little bit of my ETH and, and buy some kitties. So I have about a dozen kitties um, and I just Dang, hold sick. on to them, you know, they're okay. just chilling. That's dope. So technically, like for those who don't know, like you said, you started in October for people like me, that means you've been here for like 10 years. Cause that means you started like, to me, that's like so long ago and you like caught that. I was a baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is, you know, which is really dope. So outside of like crypto code, crypto kitties and top shot, there's been like a lot of stuff happening. Like me bits obviously came and sold out. Gary V's doing his stuff that got delayed today. And there's another one called like, um, the ape one, which like, I think the ape yacht club. I, yeah bored apes or something, something like that like, what else are you like interested in like is there is there some that you're like yo i want to buy this okay um actually i've been watching the me vids on open sea like the, the auction and i'm what like there's 10 minutes left and i'm like oh my god oh that person just bit oh is somebody gonna one up them and i'm just like watching and like i want them but it's like so expensive yeah and and i don't know and but um i mean as far as nfts that i want to buy I'm really, I really just, it's like NBA Top Shot moments that I want to buy. But as far as NFTs that I want to buy, I mean, nothing within reach. You know, I'm not rich, so I can't be buying crypto punk or whatever. But yeah, no, right. I mean, that would be awesome. But like, you know, yeah. um, and then I'm into Gods Unchained, which is like, I believe it's the first um, trading card game on the blockchain. I saw, and I don't know, if you've, have you heard of it? I've saw, I saw, but I never dug into it. You said God Unchained? Gods Unchained. God Unchained. Okay. gods unchained and um i got into it like last year and actually basically it's kind of like hearthstone where you play you gain experience um and then you and then you know you build your deck and you get to open these packs so like you, you gain experience and then you unlock these packs then you open the packs there's like five or six cards in each pack and then if you get duplicates you start racking up these packs if you get duplicates of a card you actually get to fuse it together and make it into an NFT that you can sell for ETH. And so it's like an actual, but the thing cool. is for months, and I haven't even been able to, to, to mint and to like fuse any cards together for NFTs yet because um, they were doing that um, on the Ethereum network. But the thing is like the gas fees were so high and everything. And it was yeah. just, it, it wasn't scalable for them. And they really are, are wanting to, you know, be a big, a big um, project and a big game. Um, so they actually went and built their own network, um, Immutable X, which they are like, wow. they're slowly rolling out. So it's not the point where you can now fuse your cards together yet, but it's getting there. And so I'm, you know, I'm curious. I mean, I, I play the game late at night and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching it. Um, Wades, do you know Wades? Yeah. Uh, okay. So he, Wades. Yeah. yeah, when he first got into NBA Top Shot, he had, um, he was, he was actually playing Gods and Change before that. Like that was like, oh, he was wow. really into Gods and Change. I, I don't know if he still plays, um, but he, I guess, um, had, I think you can buy like chests that actually have like NFTs in them. I never did that. 
I never yeah. like spent any money. It's it's um, earn or what is it called? Play to earn, but you could also buy stuff if you That's wanted. So yeah. he ended up like selling some of his Gods Unchained NFTs and then putting that money in the NBA Top Shot when he first started out. And, and yeah, that was a podcast with him. Yeah, and I thought that was cool. But um, because I'm looking at it right now, it actually like looks it looks pretty legit. It, and look at who the the creators are too. They're really credible. I forget who, but it's like ugh, the people are like they've done projects in the past that have been successful okay. as well. So it's cool. It's on the blockchain, and it's like you know, it's really cool seeing like people like apply utility to the stuff. Like I said, like to be able to play a game and then collect NFTs yeah. and to fuse like that just sounds dope so now i have this bookmark so that i can check it out after this podcast to see what i'm potentially missing on but are you like bullish on this like you think this has like some good legs over the next like little while um i mean yeah i mean i i'm not a gamer at all and i actually like literally became like addicted to playing it like i and so like if if i became like addicted to playing something yeah. fun that's not i'm not even a gamer then like i feel like it has it has potential and you know, I, I obviously definitely want to make some NFTs. I'm excited about that. Um, you know, maybe sell some, see, you know, see how that works out. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I am bullish on the, on the game long term. I'm just kind of keeping my eye on it, you know, playing. See playing how it out, yeah. So out, out. And with the whole NFT thing, like I know you talked about, like you're, you're able to kind of like mint and sell NFTs from this game. Have you been playing with the idea of minting your own personal NFTs? Is that like, you know, okay, I see some eyeballs. And stuff. Honestly, <laughs> no, because, um, I mean, I actually literally thought about that yesterday. So that's kind of weird that you said <laughs> that, but I was only thinking about it. Like, what if I just like made myself an NFT and just like kept it or whatever, like, you know, not necessarily to sell, but maybe to keep. And then I, I guess if somebody wanted to buy it, like maybe they could, but, um, I was kind of thinking about that. I was like, what if I just like made some NFTs for myself? Like, I don't know. Um, cause I, cause I don't know. I don't think it's a hard process to, to learn how to do that, yeah. but I'm yeah. not particularly like looking to do that. I'm not particularly trying to, um, create and sell NFTs. So is that that's interesting? Cause like, you know, a lot, obviously there's like a lot of creators like doing it. Um, yeah. Are you, are you yeah. familiar with like Colin and Samir from YouTube? I'm um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've, I, I think, um, I've talked to them before, I believe. Okay, cool. So anyways, like two, like, you know, growing YouTubers. So they launched theirs yesterday. I think it ended up selling for like 30 K in the last few minutes. Wait, what did they sell? So they launched their first NFT. Uh, oh. and basically what their NFT was like, you know, they gave away like, you know, private Slack group with them, like these FaceTimes with them. Like they gave all this like cool utility. So if you were like fans of them, it made sense to like go after it, but also like if you won, then you get to like be on their YouTube channel and be like a part of their like crypto advisory board that they're trying to build out for creators and like a lot of other cool, like utility. So oh, it's wow. just dope. It's just dope seeing like creators come up and Gary Vee's doing the same thing, right? Like yeah. he's adding like all this like crazy utility. So it's going to be yeah. interesting to see like the next year, like who does what. And well, and I'm excited for, for top, I mean, top shot to come out with, you know, added utility and not just the game hardcore, but, you know, yeah. potential for, you know, I mean, I know they've said before, like, you know, we want to reward hodlers, long-term hodlers. So I think they're going to create some type of incentive for people to be holding uh, moments long-term and, and the trade ticket thing is technically you to added utility to all the moments as well. Um, but it would be cool for stuff like, you know, access to certain events or in game or, stuff. Know, yeah. Maybe, maybe you get like a, a special thing in genies or whatever, like for crypto kitties, you know, if you, if you had a crypto kitties account, then you got the pack and I got the pack and I didn't open it, but I got the pack with the three cats, Carl Anthony town moments. And oh, like, Oh, right. Okay. And, and that was for free just for having an account. So I was thinking, well, maybe for genies, they'll do something like that, where it's like, if you have an NBA top shot account and you like connect it or something like, you'll get, you know, a little something special. Yo, that's a dope idea. I got genies and I'm super like, I'm super bullish on genies. I think like that's like the next big thing. Um, yeah. They're going to go that's hand in hand with Top Shot. So I'm really excited to see like the utility get, that gets built around it. Yeah. It's like, it's super exciting. But with the whole ticketing idea, I'm sure you've talked about this so many times. Like, what do you actually think is going to happen? Like, do you think it's going to cost like a hundred tickets or like a hundred moments to get a hundred tickets? Any I think speculation? 
I think what they want to do is make it so that tickets are, I, I think that they want their, I mean, as we can see now, they are trying to put out these, you know, pre-order base packs every week. So, you know, 300K base packs coming out every week. I think that they want, you know, one to $2 moments on the platform, just like abundant moments, because, you know, if, if it costs a hundred tickets and, and, and uh, there's $2 moments, then that's $200. Like I would pay $200 for an SM base pack. Like that's cheap. But, um, I mean, I don't really know. And then they, I actually kind of didn't know that it was a couple months out and I was like buying like $5 moments. And then Steph's like, it's a couple months out. You know that, right? And I was like, oh, shh. So then I, I was like, whatever, like, I'll just keep them. And just in case they're used for a yeah. challenge, like, you know, might as well, you know, have some. And if they're used for a challenge, great. Or I can gift them away, stuff like that. But um, if they're a couple months out, that could be S3. Because they, they said the plan is for S3 to start in the off season. So if that's the case, then it's not going to be these S2 35,000 CC moments that people are trading in because they're going to be too, like, valuable. Right. They're not going to be, you know, one to $2. So I think that they're going to try to make, like, $2 abundant moments. Yeah, maybe it will cost 100 tickets. We'll see. Yeah, I don't it'll know. be interesting to see. I did the same thing as you. Had, like, the last, like, few days, I've just been, like, copying, like, 30 plus 40 moments. But I actually scooped some, like, they were, like, three, four bucks. I'm like, okay, it's, it's starting to, like, get a little lower so i just like i'm just yeah. grabbing just to like have at this point um, yeah i mean i'm 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 actually looking forward to the next uh base pack drop um what is it friday isn't it where are friday. okay so i think i'm gonna buy more like uh 35k cc moments because i want a variety um you know just to have multiple different moments and i, I mostly have s1 and you know it's S1, first of all, S1's not as volatile because, you know, S2 <laughs> yeah. is, is, is where it's at for now. S1's kind of more long-term model. Um, I would like to be able to, you know, occasionally flip stuff if things pump, but if I don't have any S2, then that can't happen. Um, you know, just kind of be more into it, you know, have a little more fun with it. So. 100%. So obviously like same thing that your sister's doing is like you're holding packs. How mm -hmm. many packs do you have? Is there like an estimate? <sighs> I literally just counted the other day and now I forgot. Oh yeah. I think it's 26. So you're up, you're up there. You got to get him out. And then actually, actually, you know what, what's your, uh, what's your top shot? Like username, Jennifer, just my first name. Oh, you secured. You secured it. Yeah, dude. Back then nobody had their first name. I was like, why aren't people just getting their first name? Like literally just get your first name. But people had these random ass usernames. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> first name is where it's at. I'm telling you, it's easy. It's, it's easy. Uh, What's the estimate on how many moments you have in total? I think I, I think I have 313. Kiss you up there. So you got like a solid collection. Um, what's like some of your favorite moments that you have? Cause I'm sure you have some, like some good ones in there. Oh yeah. I, my best moments that I have are, I have two, uh, LeBron James, uh, rare. So the final set S one finals rare set. I have two of those, which, wow. um, those actually opened from packs. Um, back in October, I bought 10 packs for $28 each. That was the max. I think you could buy 10. And I got, I opened two LeBrons and I just kept them this whole time. Like it takes a lot of discipline to keep something this whole time. And, and <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but, but for me, I'm, I'm actually really, I am a really patient person and I, I, uh, I don't mind holding. So I, I just continue to hold and one of them I, I'll probably keep forever. I'm looking at your account right now and it's ridiculous. Like the bull bull, three S, like some of these moments, I'm like, yo. And yeah, the, the fact bull, that you have so many low serials is like, I'm, I'm just mad at you. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Um, the bull bull actually got from pack. Actually, Steph had bought. Really? I was like, I paid her. I was like, can you just buy it? Like she was on the side. I was like, can you just get two packs? Like one for me, one for you. So that's why it shows um, that I got gifted it, but actually oh, okay. I got it. But right. yeah, I opened it for a pack and I was really excited about that. Um, Sheesh. Yeah, oh, collection, yo, collection's looking nasty. I got nothing to say. Um, super dope. You got actually a lot of like solid, solid moments on here. Um, but LeBron's your favorite. Is there like, is there like one in there? Okay, who's your favorite player that you want to collect or you're trying to collect? 
So it's always kind of changing um, because I don't, you know, actively watch basketball every day. I kind of just like, you know, I, I, I just collect what I want and I, I decide who I want, you know, to collect. And some people are like, oh, you're collecting bad players. Like when I was stacking Kelly Olenix as one final rare moments and they're like, why are you stacking him? Like, and I'm just like, cause I want to, like, why can't I just collect what I want? <laughs> but, um, but actually right now I'm really, um, I actually really want to get a lot of uh, Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero moments because I love the Heat. I love Lakers and Heat and and I actually just love Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. I have no idea why. I just like I'm just like they seem cool. Like I want to stack some of their moments. So they yeah. are cool and that's like super valid. Plus they're like hella young, so yeah. I think it's and and go up right the value. Yeah, and I have Tyler Hero's Eastern Conference Finals moment, which is going to get burned. <laughs> So I'm excited about that. That's cr- that's <laughs> that's crazy. I love I love seeing this. So you got a bunch of stuff here. What in terms of packs? Obviously, we can't see the packs. What's like the one pack that you're just super excited about? Because you know we can't see which which ones you have. Oh, the unopened ones. Oh, yeah. Like sorry, the unopened yeah. ones. Yeah. Dude, if I open that packs, I'd have so many more moments. Like. Yo, that's how I feel too. <laughs> <laughs> you have unopened packs too. Yeah, I have. I think 12 on open packs now. Oh shoot. Yeah. Back them up. yeah I'm, I'm racking. I'm, I'm trying to stack, but now they're starting to get like, you know, just the basic ones. So like, I'm actually starting to think about playing with like the ones they're giving away every week. Yeah. I don't know if like makes, I don't know if it makes sense to hold those packs or just like rip them. I open. mean, it's kind of a toss up. It's like, it's like, if you only hold it for like a month, like it's not worth it. You should, you should yeah. just, open it in the beginning because you know there's not that much supply and maybe you can you know try to flip quickly and make a profit but like if you if you i mean it kind of depends but if you're willing to hold them like for six months i think it is worth it personally like yeah i'm um, I'm definitely down for that yeah because i think they said six months is when they'll have the ability for you to buy and stuff yeah that's gonna be a game changer what'd you say that's gonna be a game changer when that comes up i think that's like one of the things i'm most excited about is to see like First of all, how crazy some of the packs are going to go for in terms of the price, but just like, you know, how it'll all work and then just staying on that. Is there like a feature that you really want to see on the platform that's not there? I mean, I, I mean, besides the pack feature, which by the way, I'm not going to be selling my packs. I'm going to be buying more. Yeah, but, that's, um, that's my, my, my plan, hopefully too. Yeah, but maybe not like the very first, you know, you got to kind of wait for like the hype to go down a little bit. A little dip. And like, <laughs> But you got to try to time it right, you know, but they are going to go for a premium. I really want to see like some sort of organizational feature. I would love to be able yeah. to be like, all right, like these are the moments, you know, I, I want to, um, I want to hold these for this long. I want to do this with these, like kind of like be able to plan out what I'm doing with my moments or like, you know, being able to, or it's like, I mean, showcases, you know, kind of, you can do that a little bit, but it's, it's not the same when you're looking through yeah. your collection. So. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, something I saw, I forget who posted on Twitter yesterday. You probably saw it, but with all the pack drops that are happening, like, you know, the ones that are happening, the, basically the pre-orders, you order Wednesday or whatever, you reserve it, get it Friday or next week. Yeah. If there's a way to like put that into like a, a subscription or like automatic renewal. Oh my God. I read someone said that. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, I can't remember. So I apologize for whoever that was. Bro, I, I saw that. I was like, oh man, please, like, please build this feature. They should do that. I will literally, I'm like, take all my money. I'll like, for like a year, you know, just to not have to like wait to like yeah. do all that. Oh my God. That would be so great. I mean, does that, but the question is, does that ruin the experience? Like what, like, you know, yeah. what, what does that do? I mean, you know, cause then it's like people could just subscribe and then never log into Top Show. Cause they're like, yeah, I'll just let my packs or crew. And it's like, well, you know, they're not really, then they're not really on the site and stuff and they're not really like. Yeah. They're not interacting. I guess it it works for like, maybe like these lower packs, but never for like, you know, the higher end ones. Cause like those you need to like experience. (laughs) Um, So in terms of like, so, okay. Dapper labs, I'm going all over the place here, but Dapper labs has been wild the last little bit, right. Raising money all over the place, money that who knows what's going to happen, but they're obviously, obviously also hiring a lot of dope people. Took someone from Mm -hmm. the NFL for marketing. I think they took someone from the MLB. Yeah. Other day for, for that too so like the team is like you know starting to come together yeah. which is cool which so i got a couple questions for that which first of all which player are you most excited to see get put on the top shot that's gonna like make things potentially like go crazy player like basketball player 
Yeah, that's software. Put on the put like, no, like, like okay, the let me process. let me rephrase this. Um, in terms of like players who aren't on the on it right now, and it could be anyone from any era of basketball. Oh, okay, like a moment. Like, like a moment. Like who do you think is like gonna when they get listed on here? has potential like for it to go mainstream or like that, like hundreds of thousands of people to sign up just because that person's on there. I mean, um, there's a few ways to you answer this a bunch, a bunch. Well, because, because I was initially thinking, you know, Kobe LeBron, but it's like, that might be hard for them to get the rights. I know that they're coming out with a Shaq run it back. Yes. And, and so, Absolutely. and Shaq is really you know, big publicly, like he's always doing, he's always on like TV and all that. Yeah. So that might be, you know, potentially a, a catalyst for, you know, massive user growth. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, those are the three I would say, I guess. So I'm on the same page with you, obviously, Kobe, obviously MJ, I'm hoping because he's an investor. So I think yeah. that's like a no brainer to do like a bunch of Chicago Bulls throwbacks with all those guys. And I was yeah. also thinking, like, I don't know if you watch. Do you actually watch NBA? Like, do you like? Because I know Steph says she's like not a huge fan. I'm pretty sure she said that. But yeah, like, uh, yeah. I no. I mean, I watched when I was a kid, but okay. um, I watch on Twitter. Uh, sometimes I'll see little highlight videos on Twitter. Okay, fair enough. So, but do you know like the NBA NBA on TNT guys? Like, it's Shaq, Charles Barkley, Ernie, and Kenny. It's like these four commentators. Mm -hmm. So, like, my thought was like, if you put all four of those, because they're all OGs. And like did some kind of like cool pack that'd be like the perfect way to like make it go mainstream. Yeah, and they'll talk not, about it all the time. Yeah, yeah, they're just gonna chop it up and they're gonna compete like who's selling for more and you know all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I just think there's so much like I just feel like there's so many cool moments that are gonna be coming out that this is gonna be like really dope for the next 20 years. You know what I mean? Like there's no way it's gonna run out 20 soon. years, Jesus. More That's more than that. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I feel like things will um, cause I, I feel like in the technology world, things move quickly, you know, like things progress pretty quickly. I mean, I don't think it's going to take too long for mass adoption, like for, yeah. for there to be, I don't know how many, how many users would be like a lot, like, uh, let's say like 10 million users on the site, let's say, yeah, that'd I don't be think it's going to take 10 years. I no, think no, no, it would no. take, you know. I think next year, maybe to be honest. I mean, yeah, maybe one to two years. I mean, yeah, who knows how fast things will progress, but you know, I mean, all they have to do is hear about it and and you know, brand awareness, but also be willing to, you know, pull the trigger and actually join the platform and buy stuff. Um, but you know. Yeah. So with that with Dapper, I, I'm totally on the same page. I think it's gonna be super fast growth with Dapper Labs and everything they have going on with Genies and I'm sure a bunch of other projects that haven't been announced yet. Like, is there like another sport you're excited to see get into this whole marketplace and compete with Top Shot in their own in their own way? I'm excited for WNBA. I am really excited for that. I don't know when they're coming out with it, but I know they have plans to. Yep. And I don't know if it's going to be a separate site from NBA or if it's going to be maybe like a different tab or if like it's all the same. I don't really know how they're going to do that, but I am really excited to collect WNBA. And moments. Um, I used to go to games when I was like a kid, because like at at the library that was like next to my house, like if you read like a certain amount of books, like you could redeem them for either WNBA tickets oh, or hockey tickets. And I would I would do both, but um, hockey's just like only in the winter. And right. but right. yeah, and so like I I remember like sitting like close because they gave like good seats for like you know the the library kids, and like it was just such an awesome experience. And uh, I lived in, in Phoenix, Arizona, so uh, Phoenix Mercury, and Diana Tarazi is on that team. And she's like, oh, she's yeah. like the, she's like the, like the LeBron of yeah, she's um, WNBA. And so, and I didn't even know I was watching like one of the greatest, you know, WNBA players live, <laughs> but it was like, dang, like she's awesome. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. And, and um, yeah, I'm super excited to see stack up on those moments yeah i think that's gonna be really dope when they integrate it i feel like i may have saw something that said it would be later this year but i could be obviously completely wrong but it will be like really cool to see how they do it whether it's yeah. same site or what or integrations but that's gonna be huge and i think that's just great because it's like there's shining more light on the WNBA, which like a lot of people don't yeah. do so like i said i'm also looking forward yeah. to it like i was watching lisa leslie back in the day break the record so like there's so many cool moments they have that i think the average person doesn't know about 
because they've never been exposed to WNBA. Exactly. You know? And I think that's the thing where it's like, well, yeah, but who watches the NBA, WNBA? And it's like, yeah, well, that's kind of, that's slightly the point where yeah. it's like, you know, it's bringing more exposure. It's like, it's the same sport, you know, it's just like, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, the guys are better. I mean, they've, they've, NBA has been around longer than WNBA and, you know, physically guys are kind of like more capable in, in certain senses. So it's like, you know, but it's like, it's like you have to kind of respect it at, for, for, you know, for being a female, like in the WNBA, like that's huge. And that's like, you know, that it's like, that is great in, in and of itself. And yeah, like not everybody can dunk and stuff, but it's like, you know, <laughs> females aren't, aren't naturally like super yeah, tall. It's so. to be like about the dunks and honestly half the moments on top shot aren't dunks. And you know what I mean? Like there yeah. is this like random stuff. So it's like, it's going to go hand in hand, but also like there's players like Lisa Leslie who, who did dunk and like who have those moments. And I think those are going to be like super rare and like just super dope to see come out. And yeah, I'm just excited for like, for them to add more utility to it. I feel like with the WNBA, like those players are going to be open to just probably doing even more stuff for the people who own their moments. You know what I mean? I just feel like they'll be more open compared to some yeah. of the NBA players and like down for the cost. So That's super excited. Yeah. Um, outside, of, outside of basketball, okay. is there another sport that you really love or watch? I don't have a TV. I don't watch anything. Um, but... I, and consciously, cause I, I, you know, I haven't, it's a rather TVs. <laughs> yeah. I don't like watching things. I'd rather create, but like um, another sport. I mean, I, I was a runner in high school, so I didn't really like do anything besides running, but I mean, I'm down for whatever, like, you know, when they come out with UFC, like I've never watched UFC, but like I'll collect moments, you know? And, yeah. and I know that people, sometimes people don't understand that they're like, seriously, why, like you don't even watch basketball. Like, why do you collect moments? And it's like, because I can, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't have to watch them. Why aren't you them. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I, I watch my moments and, you know, I, I'm, um, I, I do believe that, that, you know, what Dapper Labs is doing is, is revolutionary. And, you know, the fact that they created their own, they built their own blockchain flow, which is what NBA Top Shot runs on. So this is like the first time where it's like, a centralized platform is running on a decentralized blockchain. And it's like, they actually want to, right now it's like, you can't move your moments. You know, they're stuck in right. NBA Top Shot. So it's like, um, but but that'll, that'll change soon. I think they do want NBA Top Shot to overall be decentralized, but I think, you know, with multi-counting and bots and all these, you so know, um, problems, it's like, it's, I think it is almost better that top shot is centralized because you can use your credit card like it so it's easy. easier for mass adoption yeah yeah so I, I feel like the biggest key for their growth was the fact that you don't need a you don't need metamask you don't need a wallet it's just yeah. like your credit card and that's it and i'm sure so many people were running up their credit cards which probably is a good or a bad thing depending on who you are um, but you know it's just cool right like I said like um even like my, some of my friends who have no idea about it, they're like, oh, you can just put your credit card. And they're like, oh, this is dope. That's perfect. And like, that's how adoption grew. So they just killed it in so many ways. And honestly, like, I know you know it too, but like, their team is like killing it. And the, I think people overlook that. They're still in beta. They're still doing all these things. But like the team's growing, man. Like they're making some crazy power moves, I think, even more than they're probably even putting out there to us for us to see. Yeah. So I don't know. I just feel like by the end of the year, it's going to be like such a like such a dope experience for everyone. Oh yeah, I think so too. And, and, um, you know, I, I am, I, I can't, it's, it's kind of crazy that we're still, you know, in beta. Cause it's like, yeah. well, what is it going to, what is it going to look like when we're out of beta? You know, like what is, what does NBA top shot out of beta look like? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see that as well. And I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know, during the beta. It's like, you know, I feel honored Seriously. that I get to be here. Yeah. Cause uh, you're, yeah, you're one of the ones leading the way too, which is like, what I want to talk about next, you said something, I forget like exactly the word you said, but we we're talking about TV and you're just, you basically said something. You're like, I'd rather just create. Yeah. I'd rather create than consume. Than consume. Yeah. yeah. Which is like dope. I love like the way you put that. So like yeah. going back to you as a content creator and like, what do you want to, what do you want to like achieve? Like, what do you want to build out? If you know what that looks like maybe for the next year or so. I mean, ultimately I just want to create 
easy to digest, you know, short content that can really inform and educate people. That's, you know, at the same time, it's still entertaining, you know, I'm like smiling, you know, all that. And it's like, but it's educational. Like that, I think, or what's the combination Talib says, edutainment. edutainment, edutainment. That That's ultimately what I want to do is really just educate. And, um, and then, and then of course, you know, have it be a little entertaining as well, you know, give away stuff like that. But I mean, I definitely, I'm, I'm hoping to introduce a lot of people to the space, I think. I mean, right now, you know, it's mostly all NBA Top Shot people watching my videos. I can tell when I read the comments and, it, you know, everyone's like in Top Shot. We're, nobody's like trying to fight me about, oh, what is this NBA Top Shot thing? You know, everyone's already in it that watches my videos. But, you know, maybe when NBA Top Shot starts blowing up a bit, you know, maybe one of my videos, you know, goes a little viral and maybe like, other people start to see it and then they're like, what the heck is this? And then maybe, you know, they go back, they watch some other videos and they you know, kind of learn bits here and there and they start, you know, becoming a collector. And um, I think ultimately though, is I want to help introduce, I I'm kind of like on board with Dapper's mission, which is like, you know, bring the blockchain. I think their mission is like, bring the blockchain to a, a million, a billion people or something. So I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like helping with that in a way, you know, like helping, helping with, you know, web 3.0, like the, you know, the better version of the internet, um, a more secure and reliable, faster version of the internet, right. you know, um, permanent version. So, and, and I would love to do um, interviews on my YouTube channel, you know, with some like really knowledgeable people to kind of make things simple, like, you know, simple videos, like, what is flow? And then it's like, you know, you kind of explain like how Rohamon or, or, or Alan or something. And it's like, you know, try to make these high level things really simplified and, and just like short, easy to digest content for people. I love it. And I love that you want to make it short and digestible. Cause I think that's so key. I actually think that's one of the make, main, not main reasons, but one of the big reasons like you're get growing so fast. is like, even me, I can hop on and watch your video. And it's like, I don't have to eat away half my day or like yeah. an hour. You know what I mean? It's like, boom, like it's to the point, which is like great. Um, mm -hmm. so I, that, that's going to be dope. I'm definitely excited to see you build it out. The question I want to ask you is that you, you just, I'm, you're still kind of fresh into making content. I'm just going to like maybe say that because you haven't been doing it for like years. Right. Or am I wrong? Um, I have. So I was going to oh, say, okay. I think one of the reasons why um, I've kind of gotten good at making so like my weekly update videos, I literally, that's a whole day. It's like an eight hour like production, like from start to finish. Cause it's like, I have to gather the information yeah. after, you know, I, I don't just do one take. I'm not a one take wonder. Like yeah. I'll do a couple takes. I'll like, hello, top shotters. I'm like, Oh shoot. No, like I messed it up. And then I'll do yeah, it again, yeah. again, again. And it's like the different parts and then edit it all that, you know, and it takes a lot of time, but it seems like it's like seamless. And it seems like, Oh, you know, quick video but it takes a long time to make. And I think that I got that um, from when I was, um, I was a full-time TikToker. So I, I did TikTok full-time. That was my job. I made, I made it into my job. It's not like TikTok paid me, but right. brands paid me to make videos with their, with their stuff. And, and um, so I learned how to make short 15 second videos oh, oh, that oh. took me hours, but they were 15 seconds. So, so, you know, spending a lot of time but but making it really quality I think that's the key and I think that people are like hungry for that kind of stuff and you know I just kind of followed the same principles on YouTube I was like okay you know I can spend hours but I'll make it into a couple minutes because I hate watching long stuff like I get impatient I would rather see something that's short therefore I'm going to create what I would like to see you know so that makes this makes so much more sense as to like why your content is at this level because I didn't know you did the TikTok, so I'm happy you said that. Yeah. So the first thing I want to ask you is, what was your TikTok around? Was it just like your life? Was it a, a niche? Yeah. So I um I did like I I made like funny beauty videos, I guess. Okay. So like yeah, so I would do um so like um sometimes I would dye my actually splat sponsored me a couple times um and and I dyed my hair like for a video and it would be like it would be like it would be like a skit where it's like, I'm going to the hair salon to dye my hair blue. And then it like turns out purple. And I'm like, what? This, this was supposed to be blue. And, and then, and then it's like kind of a, 
And then people in the comments will be like, no, it's purple. No, it's blue. Like just stuff to get people um, talking as well and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I just kind of, and that, it's not like I started out like, oh, I'm going to do, I, I'm going to be a TikToker. You know, I, I just, I just thought TikTok was fun and I started making videos. And then my friend, uh, Michael, he's actually, um, he's huge in the marketing uh, space and he actually did marketing for Grant Cardone and all that. Like he's actually wow. one of those behind the scenes guys that like nobody knows because he's not like out there putting himself out there. But um, he reached out to me and he's like, hey, like, uh, what's your niche? And, and I was like, niche. And, and we started talking and, and next thing you know, he's, he was helping me for free. Just like, I don't know, we just became really good friends and he just started helping me like grow my TikTok. And I was like, all right, cool. So I decided, you know, I was going to make a niche and, and, and that's why YouTube, it's like, people are like, are you going to talk about these other NFTs? And I'm like, probably not. No, like, I'm just going to talk about NBA yeah. Top Shot because Own that's it. my niche. Like that. Yeah. That's what people know me for. So, and, and you know, with TikTok, that's like what I did. And, you know, you niche down at first and then you can slowly branch out as you build an audience. So it's like, you know, I, I, I might slowly branch out to UFC or WNBA and stuff like that. But I'm probably not going to go make like a video about like chain monsters or anything like on my personal um, just because people, you know, you want people to know exactly what they're coming to your channel for. Yeah, um, that's the key for sure to, to know what they're going to expect from your uploads. That's actually really dope. So the TikTok account, is that still up? Are you still using that? Um, no, I, I am. I'm a retired TikToker now. Oh, you retired from the game too. Young. I retired. I was, <laughs> I was in the game for like a year. I retired. Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, I'm retired. I mean, I, I guess it's still up. I think, I think I privated my account because, okay, okay, you know, okay. people start finding you and they start like sending you your videos. They're like, okay, chill, like relax. You pull so everything like, up from your past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God. All right. I'm just going to, you know, private my account, but um yeah i'm a retired tiktoker that's dope you know it's crazy because tiktok changed so many people's lives in the last year it's like actually kind of wild to think about it and like the other thing too is like creating content is like it's hard i don't think people like yeah. really understand like you know, for, know. for me i know like I, I understand like if you're making a video like it's not always one take jake there's issues things happen lighting whatever then you got to edit it Mm-hmm. it is just so much you know the process is like so a lot much. people people just think oh it's so easy you just you just make a video <laughs> push like a button. Oh, yeah. you just put no that's what they would say you just push the button <laughs> oh yeah you just push the button to record that's it like there's so much that goes into it and you know I, I mean I think that content creating being a content creator on social media hasn't been around for that long that's like a new ish thing you know mm-hmm. so I think that people you know they give a lot for it but like uh for example, like in China, actually the Chinese version of uh, TikTok, it's called uh, Douyin. I hope I'm saying it right, but yeah, Douyin. Uh, Douyin. Okay, so you know about it, yeah. So yeah, literally, but- like, th- like those people, like the the Douyin creators, are like highly respected people. People do not buy things from uh, like Facebook ads or anything like that, yeah, and but think- they'll they'll buy from like their favorite creator and stuff because it's like, a trustworthy source. So. Um, I, I just think, yeah, people get a lot of shh for, you know, being a creator and stuff. And, but it's like, you know, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of, and you have to put yourself out there. You're being vulnerable. Yeah. Like you're putting Every single day. out there. Yeah. Everything yeah. you say, it's like, you can't take it back, you know? And, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, whatever you Especially do. Especially on like, live streams, which you're always doing and, you know, stuff like yeah. that. It's like, you're all basically just like, it's, it's a full-time job. You know, that's what you're doing. That's what you're committed to. And you're hoping like to make it what probably is already your full-time, but it's like, you want this to be what you do for the next X amount of years. Right. And you want to get big and grow your personal self, but it's like, comes at a cost, yo, comes at yeah. a lot of hours, a lot of frustration, a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that people don't see. Cause they just click and see what's being played. Yeah. And a lot of like, um, like, like for TikTok, it's not like I was making money in the beginning. It's like a lot of grinding for free, you know, for, for nothing. And, and, um, and then, you know, eventually you start making money and stuff, but it's like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of just like grinding for free as well, you know? So, yeah, I think I always use Mr. Beast as an example. I think he did it for like, I don't know, 10 years or whatever until he like blew up. Like he was making videos when he was like really young. And then like one day, you know, he started to get viral, but his grind was like so crazy, you know, to get where he is. And I think like a lot of us are doing that, you know, cause I'm, I'm going to assume right now, even for YouTube, is your YouTube, like, did you already pass all the requirements? For monetization, so I already, 
passed all the requirements like a little bit ago, but I was like, no, I don't want to monetize my YouTube channel because I, I don't want people to see some cheeseburger commercial before they see my video. And then I literally read that you can still see ads. Like it's always like, the ads. Literally, they yeah. still show you ads even if you're not monetized. And I was pissed. I was like, oh hell no. Yeah. If people are gonna see a cheeseburger commercial, I might as well be making a you couple bet dollars. It paid off. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and 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 you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, monetize for a couple of months because I think it, it kind of, in my opinion, I thought it, like maybe it would stump my my long term growth if I if I monetize in the beginning. But then I learned that like it doesn't matter anyway. They still show ads, so I was like, whatever, I'll just apply for the. So I just applied and I'm I'm pending cool. or whatever. But yeah, and 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 this also goes to show too, like I was just creating videos on YouTube about NBA Top Shot, and then Christian. Uh, one of the founders from Evaluate Market reaches out to me on Twitter because he saw my YouTube videos and he's like, hey, like, love your content. And like, you know, he wanted to like set up a meeting. And next thing you know, I'm like working full time for Evaluate Market now. And it's like, and I still get to do my personal stuff and I get to create content for Evaluate and I'm making a YouTube channel for them too um, this week. I love that. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. And it's like, it's awesome. It's like the best of both worlds, you know? I was literally just about to ask you, you transition perfectly into that question of like, how the heck did the whole evaluate thing come about? What that's like, that's amazing. Like that's perfect. And it's right up your alley, which is great. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to actually force you to do it. Could you just quickly explain like evaluate market? Yeah. So it is a platform, um, for analyzing your MBA top shot moments and account value for right now, but we are going to be adding other NFTs. That you can analyze uh, in the future. Um, so, you know, popular NFTs, there aren't many um, analyzing tools out there. And so, yeah. you know, yeah. for NBA Top Shot, there are a few, um, but we also want to expand to other NFTs and, and we're looking to add more features as well on our site. But yeah, you can, you can, there's a lot you can do actually. And then, and I think people kind of don't know the full potential of, of everything on the site, which is why I want to create like little uh, short videos, like highlighting, you know, the different features and stuff like that just to make it easier. Yeah, you're gonna come in and, and kill that, I think. Cause yeah, there is a lot, if you just look at it, I'm looking at it right now, like it could be like crazy. You have no yeah. idea what's going on in the market, but it's actually easy. So yeah, yeah that'll be great for you. Um, and then just for your story, like I always say this, but like honestly content creates so many opportunities. Like mm -hmm. people just don't realize it, but that's why you gotta like pump it out, put it out there. Cause yeah. you never know who's, who's watching your stuff or who's gonna stumble upon it like a year from now. And then maybe change your life like that day because they saw something, you know. So that's like that's really dope how Evaluate found you. I'm sure there's gonna be some other opportunities you get because of the content you're creating. Um, and then yeah, and, go ahead. And, uh, even like on on Discord, I remember I I had reached out to like some of the the bigger collect. Well, okay, okay. I, I just, there was one person that I reached out to, and she's a female, and she's like a big like she's like in the top like 25. She's a big account, and I reached out to like say like you know, your, your account's really inspiring and everything like on discord. And I just wanted to say like, you know, you really inspire me and all that. And, um, she like left me on red, did not respond to me for literally like, it was like two months. And then two months later, she, and, and you know, then I started my YouTube channel, started making videos two months later, she responds. She's like, Hey, like I, you know, I just watched your YouTube videos. Like I, I didn't respond to you at first because I didn't know who you you were like, like, you know, now you have some credibility basically. Yeah. Cause it's like, I see you on a video and yeah. you know, she's been, she's been kind of like, you know, hurt in the past through, through people reaching out and, and stuff like that. Just, you know, not good things. So it was like, she's more worried, weary of that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, it was like, you know, kind of opened the door for, for me to also talk to people. Cause it's like, well now, you know, you're not just some anonymous person that could potentially be, you know, fake. Yeah. You have a picture, but that couldn't, yeah. that, that might not be you, you know? Exactly. So, I think that's like the weird thing about the whole crypto yeah. world is there is like a lot of like random stuff happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like the background. So like, it is a valid thing. Like, yo, like, who are yeah. you? This picture. I've, I've seen people all the time with like pictures of someone. I was like, is that really you? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, <laughs> no, good, to, good to know. Like, um, that that's actually amazing though. There's some crazy like whales in, in there. And like when I look at the top accounts and like the values and like how many moments, I'm just like, yo, like mm -hmm. that's wild. I know. <laughs> it's really insane. Wild. It's insane. 
it's crazy too because you know it, they ha they have different styles as well you know some of the whales yeah, they're yeah. like long-term hodlers never selling you know some of them it's like they'll, they'll sell if they want to get some other stuff but you know they have a ton of moments they're hoarding and holding on to and then some of them like um you know they're just like flippers and they're like you know yeah. i just you know flip and and whatever and and it's cool you know that everyone has their own you know styles of of, of buying and selling moments and uh, you know what they kind of do and what their specialty is you know it's like i think flipping is 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 definitely hard um i mean you know there are some more like easier easier things where it's like you know if a moment is used for a challenge it'll pump and that's a great time to sell and you know just some some basic things like that but it's like you know day trading mba top shot moments oh no that's like that's like hard Heck yeah it'd be me. i don't think yeah it's definitely not there yet um, yeah, I don't, yeah, and I yeah. don't think you could. I, I don't, don't know, know if you could. Yeah. Well, I think, well, so during like the February pump, I think people were like day trading because you could easily, and like you could easily do that stuff. And then it's like, oh, like I'm, you know, I'm good at it. But then it's like, all of a sudden we're dipping and it's like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> but I'm like, I'll just stick to what I know, long-term hodling. If something pumps and I feel like letting it go, you know, I will, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm on the same page with you. I think the other dope thing about all the collectors is like, you know, some people are collecting their favorite players. Some people are collecting like a certain serial number because it has like like 420 or whatever. Like everyone just has their own mindset of like, you know, what they think is going to hold value. And I think that's like what's so cool about when you go up the chain to see like the differentiation between everyone. Because like, for example, what you like doesn't mean I'm going to like it. So we could be completely different, but that just makes it cool. You know, when we come talk about our yeah. moments, like to have all that different stuff, I think it's it's so sick. What do you um, what do you like collecting? Like, what 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 kind of moments do you like? Honestly, like on I'm a huge like we have a basketball brand, so like I'm a huge like basketball fan. Okay. So like I'm definitely like collecting yeah. like a lot of players. Like I'm going after like a lot of season ones, going after like the rising stars. Like I'm truly trying to think of like, hey, okay, the next like five years, like who's gonna be an all star? like who mm -hmm. has like hall of fame potential. Like, it's like, I think like being in the sport, when you have the knowledge of like 10 years of basketball, like not that I'm amazing, but like, at least I understand the baseline of like how things work. So I'm trying to like yeah. try to use that to my advantage. Plus my circle of people okay. who are basketball trainers, but like, yo, like who's like, who's next up? Like, you know, from this draft pick, like who's going to be like, you know, the next big thing and just trying to like keep that in mind. But also then there's like, having fun and like, well, who's, like, who's, who's like, who's like, Sorry, sorry. Go. I was, I was gonna say, I was gonna say like for example, the other day, like Steph was like, "Yo, I'm collecting CP3." I was like, "Damn, you know what? I love CP3." <laughs> so I went and bought like a whole bunch of CP3 because I forgot to do it. You know, so it's like always just like changing too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it'll definitely be fun like the next little bit. Like I definitely want to get some more LeBron stuff. I'm just waiting for like the OGs to come out. Like I missed the first running back because I wasn't even a part of the platform when it dropped. Um, but I want to get like I want to try and collect the pack. Of like actual running back with the one that Shaq's in or however they're gonna do it. Cause I heard maybe T Mac is potentially could be in there. Like I heard that a while ago. I was like, oh, that could be like so cool. So I know we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm just like I'm collecting and building the collection just like you and hodling, which I learned from so many collectors and just you know, seeing where it goes. Um, the last thing yeah. I wanted to ask you about or just talk about was the dope little feature you had on Top Shot the other day, which was like really cool. Like I opened up Twitter, I'm like, oh, yo, it's sick. Like that's Steph. <laughs> did you know about that? Is yeah. that just something that happened? Like how did that come yeah, about? Yeah, so, uh, so Trevor, uh, who I believe he runs the NBA Top Shot, official NBA Top Shot account on Twitter, he like reached out to me and he was like, he was like, hey, like, you know, love what you're doing for the community. Um, just wondering if you wanted to be um, featured in our community, like spotlight blog. And I was like, yeah, like I would love to. And so like he emailed me, you know, some questions. And then I had to like, you know, type back my responses. And then um, a couple of days later, blog came out, I was in there and I was like, sweet, wow. like, this is awesome. Um, and and that was super cool and, and, and awesome to be in. And actually it's funny because in the, the one before that, the week before that, someone, whoever was being spotlighted, forget their name, but they like mentioned me. 
in their oh, wow. spotlight. And then the next week I was in the spotlight. Like, oh, that's really cool. And that's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of, you kind of, um, because it's, 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 I believe it's still such a small community. Like, yes, there are, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know how many hundred thousands of users that have accounts, right. but not all of them are like collectors that are actually collecting. So I think there's really only, you know, several thousand, maybe, you know, tens of thousands that are actually like actively collecting. So I kind of, you know, it, I kind of am like realizing that I think a lot of the, the real collectors like actually like know who I am, like have seen me, you know, that like they'll, they've seen my content, like somehow. Um, so that's kind of cool. And, uh, but I like that everyone in the community is so awesome. And like, man, the community you know, is like my favorite everyone, thing. Everyone, yeah. It's, it's everyone's been like, awesome. Okay, like I've been able to meet like some cool content creators like you, like connect with some business people doing things like all just through Top Shot. And it's like, oh, like, that's really cool. Cause like you said, like not everyone's like, I guess a super fan of it, but there is probably like high, like 10, 20, th whatever thousand of it that they are. Yeah. And it's like, yo, those people like are living top shot. Like we're living in the metaverse of top shot in our own bubble right now, you know, just like doing yeah. <laughs> spending. And you don't feel bad. You know, like they're like, what'd you do all day? And you're like NBA top shot. And then they're like, oh my God. They're like, yes, me too. You know? And it's like, great. Like we're all in this together. You know, we're, we're all spending, you know, a ton of time just like on NBA top shot and on Twitter, looking at NBA top shot stuff and you know, all, like all that. Group. So yeah i think in the future it'll be really dope um hopefully we can organize stuff like this like post covid um but like i really want to put together some like really dope like events for like yes. um so we're, we're actually like we're we're building like our own gym right now in la so my one of the first thoughts that came to my head i don't know if this is weird or not but i was like oh man like we had a gym we could host an event for nba top shot people yeah. <laughs> like, i'm not even thinking about like the brand or basketball i'm just like how can we get nba top shot people over here to like do something cool you know, so like, I just feel like there'd be so much cool stuff happening. Like once things are like a little better in the world. Um, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I want to, I want to ask you this, I've been asking you stuff the whole time, but kind of end maybe on this and see if you have an answer to it. Cause I like to kind of throw this to people and see uh -oh. if you can end this and give like a piece of advice hmm. or actually before, before I do that, for the people who don't know you, I'm, it'll pop up on screen through my editors, shout out to my editors um where can people find you where do you want people to find you where do you want them to interact with you um you can find me on twitter my username is jennifer underscore pseudo and you can dm me i eventually get back to almost all my dms um and then um also i run the evaluate market account so i guess you could dm me on there um also on youtube yeah, sometimes people, I, I feel like sometimes people forget that I'm literally running the account. Like, but anyway, um, also on YouTube, Jennifer Topshot. I make videos uh, weekly, uh, weekly update videos, and also just random videos uh, throughout the week as well about specific topics within the NBA Topshot. Love it. Is there anything really exciting or big coming up on the roadmap for content? Like maybe some cool collabs or something like you're really excited about? You don't have to say what it is. You could just say potentially yes i mean honestly i i do really want to do collabs for my personal but i really haven't like organized that yet steph is really good at that with her twitch and all that and she's, she's been inviting me on the show yeah. yeah so i feel like i'm doing collabs because i'm like usually in her collab yeah i'm there but um I, well content to look forward to is that i'm making an evaluate market youtube channel this week and um, i'm gonna just be making like once again short form content, easy to consume, um, just about how to, how to analyze your MBA top shop moments to make better, like buying and selling decisions, you know, more informed buying and selling decisions. Um, and, and just get a better under understanding of how the market works. Um, so, yeah. I love it. So I want to thank you again for coming on the podcast. We just like passed an hour, um, uh, really fun. Actually went by super fast, hopefully went by fast for you too. Um, but I got to throw it to you now and see if you have like I either ask for like a piece of advice or like a quote or like something like kind of like a little bit more like motivational, inspirational that you kind of live by that you maybe want to share with people who are fans of Jen Sudo. Oh, that's great. I actually, one of my favorite quotes that um, 
this person that I met that was just like life changing. It was like a life changing, you know, you know, when you meet those people, they're just oh, like, yeah. they change your life. Yep. So um, this is a quote. Sometimes you have to jump off a cliff without a parachute and you'll figure it out al along the way. I love it. You know, take, it's like, the risk. And, and to me, that kind of means like, yeah, take risks, you know, be willing to take risks. You got to risk it for the biscuit, you know, and yes. um, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. I think that gets overlooked. I think it's, a, it's obviously easier said than done, but like I always tell people like yeah. the more you're open to taking those risks, like you don't know what lies ahead of you. You know what I mean? You don't know what opportunities could come by you putting out that piece of content, you doing this interview or you doing whatever. So I always like, I, I love that you said that because that's like totally on brand to like how I operate. So kudos to that. Love it. I also love risk it for the biscuit. That should be on a t-shirt hundred <laughs> percent. For your yes, <laughs> uh, okay thank you so much again jen this was honestly so dope i can't wait to see what else you're gonna kind of cook up and come up with with your personal self and with evaluate and probably a bunch of other opportunities that i'm sure are headed your way so thank you again thank you thank you so much for having me honestly it's been great